what's up YouTube Mr. Gizmo here so in the last video I covered the basics of springs and today I want to include a shock and with a shock the important thing to understand is that there's only so much travel that you get from this piston right the piston will go in this much until it bottoms out and the piston will go up this much so when we're talking about right height in the last video um, we said that the spring controls some of it, right? So if you have a very, very soft spring, once you load the car onto it, that's going to give you a lower right height than if you had a either a longer spring or a much stiffer spring, right? So one other component here is obviously the shock. So at the top here, usually there is an attachment to the top mount of some sort or a camber plate. And on the bottom, there's usually an attachment point on the strut or uh, you have your colors that you adjust on coilovers. Um, and so what we can do is we can actually adjust a certain proportion of total travel contributing to a bump or uh, the extension or droop. And so when the car is going to be, so let's say this is the top mount or my fingers are going to be the top mount here. Um, and we're going to lower the car, right? When we lower the car, remember, the shock is going to compress and the spring is going to compress until we get to equilibrium where the rate of the spring kind of dictates the right height that the car settles at. And so as you can see the shock kind of collapsed here right so now we only have about half of what we used to half of total travel right available for a bump so if the car sits at a static height like this if we hit a bump the shock only has about this much to collapse and then if we uh, go over a crest and we need to extend the suspension the shock only has you know this much to extend um, so you can actually tune the proportion of bump versus droop available on the shock by the way that you uh, attach the spring or the type of the spring that you put in so for example thinking of uh, kind of corner cases which i like to do to kind of try to understand certain concepts if you put a really tall and a really stiff spring on the car the car would basically look like it has a lift kit, right? Let's say the spring rate is enough to support the entire car on the single corner. So the spring rate is really stiff. So you would you would put the, you would lower the car, you would load up the spring, but it's not even enough load on the spring to really compress it at all because there's just no need to. The spring is just so stiff. So in that case, basically be at full droop. And so what that means is you have a lot of bump travel, right? Meaning if the, the shock looks exactly like this, to the extent that you go over a bump, you have all of this amount to travel of travel dedicated to a bump. If, for example, you have the opposite, which is a very, very soft spring or a very short spring, in that case, when you load up the car, you lower it to the ground, uh, the spring is going to collapse, right? And the shock is going to collapse with it. So in that case, the shock would look something more like this, uh, basically almost bottomed out, right? So in that case, you have very, very low amount of travel available for a bump. It's basically just, you know, this much. But to the extent that you go over a crest, you know, or you catch some air, you have all of this available for droop. For me, uh, I am running 375s in the front, so 375 pounds per inch. Um, and so where I have the colors on the, the only strut body, um, I've preloaded it uh, a lot in order for me to gain uh, some bump travel. And normally you probably want to have about 60 to 70% of the travel in bump. And so the only in my car are right now adjusted such that uh, the spring is compressed quite a bit so that when the car is lowered and uh, settles at equilibrium, that the shock is uh, compressed maybe 30% of its total travel. That means that when, when it's sitting, uh, you know, about 60 to 70% of the total travel is available for that bump component. Um, there is a single adjustment on the onions, which is this bottom color. And so what that does is it adjusts the right height as well as the preload on the spring. So in order for me to run at, uh, what is it, 13, uh, 13 and a quarter, I had to preload that spring to gain me the enough right height. But I also had to preload that spring to gain me enough bump travel. The other problem with the onions and running it with an aftermarket top or a camber plate, so I'm running uh, ground control, on the stock mount, the top of uh, the shock actually attaches kind of lower by about an inch. So it basically looks something like this. You can see my fingers are holding it here. With a camber plate, the attachment is actually up 
much higher at the very, very top. And so what that actually does is that camber plate actually swallows up some of that total travel. And so we're basically left with a much shorter, even an even shorter travel uh, of the shock. So what Olin's came up with, and what we'll take a look at uh, in some of the next videos when I start taking it apart, is uh, they've actually came up with a spacer that goes on the bottom where the, the bottom of the strut attaches to the knuckle. Uh, so it raises it upward by about uh, three quarters of an inch, I want to say. Um, and then what I can do then is once I put in that special spacer, uh, is I can then unload some of the spring force. And so by gaining some right height and unloading the spring, I'm actually kind of killing two birds with one stone. Um, however, what this, that does not really solve for is still the, the stroke of the shock itself. So in the next couple of videos, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do it as a DIY. I'm going to kind of outline all of the steps that I take, you know, measuring the right height that I'm at, before making any changes, how I go about taking apart all of the pieces that need to be taken apart to put in the spacer. One thing I didn't cover is helper springs and all the other jazz and uh, bump stops, but that's not really a point of what I'm trying to lead to, which is again what I am doing on my M3 specifically for the Olin's running with an aftermarket camber plate that swallows up some of that uh, travel, requiring me to preload the spring a lot more than I want to to gain the proper right height, stiffening the front uh, end of the car a lot more than I want to. So the solution for that is using a spacer that was developed by, uh, by Olin's and 3DM Motorsport. See you in the next one.